Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com here with a 30 for 30 Lightroom quick tip. Now, if you haven't been following the 30 for 30 Lightroom edition, you can go to fronosphoto.com slash LR3030, and you can download a free trial of Lightroom to play along with everything that we are doing. Now, this time, the quick tip has everything to do with one-to-one -one previews. Richie, let's talk about one-to-one -one previews. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with importing, and we're going to show you how you can do it on import, or you can do it once the images are imported. I personally import all the images first. I check my build previews, make sure they're on minimal. And the reason I do this is because I like to get the files in as quick as possible. You notice they're instantly in there. So that means that you can start starring them, uh, but it just created a basic preview? Correct. It's just giving you a minimal preview, basically the JPEG sidecar that you see on the back of the camera. It's nothing, not enough to check focus quickly. What we do from there is I go, I do uh, Command A is selects all. You go up to library and you go all the way down here to previews and you can do build one to one previews. So while that's happening, now I can go through and you can still see a pretty decent sized image to go through and check, but you're not going to get that punchy quick snap to check this. Right, because when you zoomed in there, it's not, it didn't form the preview yet. So if you don't form the one-to-one -one preview, what's happening is that the computer has to process each file as you go through. But here in this case, you create the one-to-one -one preview and then you don't have to do that again after the fact. One of the cool things about Lightroom is too, because the previews take up a large and substantial amount of memory, if you go into your preferences and you go into your general tab and you go into catalog settings, you can actually tell Lightroom, hey, I only need these previews for a week, 30 days, I want to never get rid of them. But after 30 days, Lightroom's actually going to automatically go ahead and just get rid of these previews. And it saves a couple, you know, a couple gigs depending on how many files you have in your catalog. Right, and, and usually after 30 days, you should be done editing the files that you have. Now, if you ever need to come back to them, you can just render them again, and then after 30 days, it gets rid of them. But that's gonna save you a lot of hard drive space. Correct. And there's also the option too, you can change the size of the preview depending on the size of your screen. You, if you have a smaller, say, a, you know, 12-inch MacBook, you don't need, you know, say, the 2048 pixel length. You need the smaller, you know, like 1440 or 1220 is going to do just fine for you. And that's also going to save you some space and rendering speed and power. So a lot of that depends on the computer that you have. But these are the things that you can do on your own system to uh, tweak how you import and to tweak how you do your one to one previews to see what works best for you. In this case, we like doing the one to ones uh, first and foremost so that we can get in there and edit. Now it's going to take some time, it's going to use the processor, but when you, when it's over, you can just focus on the editing. So there you have it. That is a quick tip using one-to-one -one previews inside of Lightroom, why we use them, and how easy it is that you can set them up yourself. But if you want to follow along all of the 30 for 30 Lightroom Edition videos, you can go to fronosphoto.com slash LR3030. You can download a free trial so that you can play along with everything that we're doing. But that is it for now. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya.